uh, Sarkoth here. I've actually had some people uh, asking me if I could teach people how I learned Japanese, but uh, I'm not really much of a teacher. I don't think I'm really qualified to do that, but I can tell you the steps that I took to get a lot better at Japanese. I mean, I, I'm, I never stopped learning. I just got good enough to where I could read manga and watch anime without uh, needing the subtitles. But I, I, I'm learning new words every day still, so it's not like I'm a master or anything. But uh, first thing I did, well, I, I found this website like years ago. It was called All Japanese All the Time. And uh, I, I originally used this guy's method, but uh, these days uh, my method's a bit different. But his, uh, how do I say, it? his method of constant immersion is a really good, um, it's a really good staple to have because uh, you're going to need constant, uh, constantly to be around the language you're learning. Otherwise, uh, it won't stick. It also reinforces new words you're uh, you're learning. Uh, fortunately, this guy doesn't really post this site anymore. It's just a blog I found uh, from a YouTuber years ago. But uh, it has a lot of stuff about uh, immersion environments and uh, learning the language. And it's where I got my first, uh, I guess, foot in the door. And uh, it's. Yeah, it's worth a, a read over if you can stand the guy's writing style. Uh, let's see, overview. Basically, uh, what he, pers he pushed was constant immersion, learning the uh, kanji, kana, and and then he he uh, had a ten thousand sentence method, which uh, it's, my my method was it evolved over the years, slightly different than what his is, but uh. Let's see, I wonder how I should do this. Should I have a video for each part of the stage? Should I just explain everything in one video? Uh, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't really plan it. I'm just turning on the mic and whatever I can think of. Well, eh, let's just go with what, okay. First thing I did, immersion environment. So, you, you stop watching English shows you stop listening to English music in your free time within reason you switch it all to Japanese and uh, I had to hunt over the internet for years over where to find this stuff uh, a lot of it you can just get on YouTube you know type in uh, Japanese videos I mean you can find some stuff but what the fuck? Huh. But I start off with just watching like anime and stuff. But uh... Maybe I'll have a separate video where I share all the resources. Because there's a lot of them that I've just discovered over the years. And I don't know if I want to go over that. But basically the key point is this. Uh, no subtitles. Watch as much Japanese language stuff as you can. Like what? Watch like, say you like anime, watch a lot of anime, but cover the subs, and even if you can't understand it, uh, you'll get used to the words, and you'll like, you'll pick up on situations. Like people are really good at picking out patterns. So like if someone like stubs their toe and they say itai, and then uh, you see you see it, but you're like yeah whatever okay gibberish, but then you see it again. And then you see it again, and then eventually, eventually you're just like, "Oh, e time must mean hurt." And uh, so you just your brain picks up on that without even needing to study the word. You've picked it up naturally, kind of like how a child would. And that's kind of the whole point. So constant immersion environment. You set that up in the beginning, uh, which is what I did. I for years I, I didn't watch any uh, English shows or listen to any English music. Except I broke the rule here and there, but I tried my best not to. And, uh, well, the results kind of speak for themselves, I guess. Since then, I, I'm not nearly as strict, but I don't really need to be. Because, uh, 
I I push back past the phase where I need that to just because when you're beginning, you you learn words and then you forget them almost just as easily. So you need to constantly be reinforcing it. But uh, after uh, after time's gone by, eventually it's in kind of ingrained in your mind, and you don't need to constantly be listening to Japanese all the time to reinforce the memory. But after you got your immersion environment set up, like I guess for this video I'll just do a general overview. Maybe I'll do another video going into detail if people like it. But after that you want to download this program called Anki. It is a, a flashcard program. But what makes this flashcard program special is that uh, it'll schedule when you want to see certain flashcards based on how well you score. So if you score really well on a card, you might not see it for a while. You score really crappy on a card, you'll see it again pretty soon, probably instantly, like almost instantly. But it, it schedules them and then it plots them out th through the days based on how well you do. Like if you do really well on a card, you might not see it in a couple days. Do really poorly, you might see it tomorrow, stuff like that. So I would download this. Afterwards, you'll have you open it. You'll get something like this. Uh, just make a name. You get this empty, empty program, and this will be the, where a lot of your Japanese learning will be taking place, at least for the beginning through intermediate parts, if not through the advanced portions. Uh, next thing would be. Oh wait, I didn't want to do that. Next thing on, on this guy's overview, and I agree with this, is kanji. The kanji are uh, like Chinese symbols, like uh, like kanji. Yeah, it, there's like a ton of them. They look like hieroglyphics when you first start off. I remember I was like, "What is this?" Uh, but yeah, they're actually. They, you could say they're letters, but they're actually closer to words. And you can like combine them, and I don't know. It, it's a lot different from English, but once you get used to it, it's pretty cool. Like, uh, like the word mountain is composed of multiple letters, but you can just have a single kanji convey the word a mountain, and it just saves you time. I don't know. I like it. If I didn't like it, I probably wouldn't have done it. Um, the language that is. So the first thing you want to do is learn kanji, and the easiest way from the easiest way for me was this site called uh, Kanji Kuhi, Dragon 731. That's actually an account name I made like when I was 13. I still used it. But uh, you go to study, and it's based off a book for the uh, reviewing the kanji by uh, James like, W. Hasig. I think that's his name. I'm terrible with names, but. Yeah, the Hasig method, where uh, it uses parts of each kanji, and you remember them in order, so then uh, you'll remember the kanji. So, it's better just to show you. So, like, number, I'm going to start at number one, right? It's just a dash. So then I open up my Anki program. Let's make, move you over. Move you over. Okay, so we'll make a new deck. I guess I could use that one, but whatever. Kanji. Alright. You add the kanji for one. It's just a single dash. Easy to remember, but the point is you want to add a story with it. And this, this, that's why this site comes in handy, it has its own stories. Uh, like this. This one is too difficult to remember. I'm giving up. It's a funny story. You'll remember it. You add. And then you go on to two. And it's the same thing. Same thing with two, three, four, five. See a more complicated one, like, uh, uh, I don't know, car? That's slightly more complicated, right? So this, this, this is harder than a line to remember, but not too hard. 
and so here's a story. My car is so fast it can go through 10 rice fields in 10 minutes. Well, if you remember the number 10 when you do number 10, it's just, it's just a, it's like a cross. And then rice field is number 14. It's just a, it's just a square box with a cross inside. So when you go back to car, all of a sudden you see it's made up of two number 10s and a field in the middle. So now all of a sudden this story, my car is so fast it can go through 10 rice fields in 10 minutes, will help you remember it. So put this here. And then I like to uh, bold in the ones that are keywords. 10 rice fields. And of course, it's for car. And the whole point is you you want to uh, conjure the meaning up. Like, there's a lot of people who uh, like to go keyword to kanji where they'll see the English word car and they'll reconstruct the kanji in their head. And I don't like doing that because my goal was to be able to read. So I wanted not my my goal was to read, not write. Let's put it that way. So I wanted to be able to see this, like previously it looked like a hieroglyphic, and then go, oh, I remember that. That's car, obviously. I didn't want to be able to see the word car in English and then uh, be able to write what it is. Like, I didn't, I didn't really care about writing, and it might be my, it might be uh, to my detriment because I can't really write right now. Like I'm good at reading, I'm good at listening, but I'm terrible at output, so I'm bad at writing and bad at speaking. But I didn't really care about those things, so that's why I'm bad at them. But uh, my goal, personally, was reading. So whenever I would see the front thing, I would be thinking to myself, the story, what is this? It's got ten, like I'd break it down, it's got ten rice field and ten. Oh, ten rice field, oh, the story of the car, okay. And then you remember it's a car. And it's like that. So then when you review, oh, it's one. And then... 10 rice field guard and then yeah and then it'll show it to you see if you forget it it'll show it to you almost immediately if you're good on it it'll show it to you in 10 minutes from now and if it's easy it'll show it to you in four days from now and you just keep going around and doing the kanji until you're done and uh there's a lot of them i i'd recommend starting off with the base uh 2042 and you're like, holy shit, 2042. But, uh, it's way less than Chinese has. Let's say that, so. I mean, it keeps going up to, like, I think I counted 3030. But 2042 is the best base. And, uh, either before. You could have done this before this, but there's actually, uh. There, there, okay, there's. How do I explain this? There's, like, three alphabets. In Japanese, uh, let me get that thing. So there's the kanji, which I just showed you. There's what's called the kana, and then there's called what's called the kana, which is hiragana and katakana. And then there's romaji, which romaji is trash. You don't even. I didn't even learn anything in romaji. You want to immediately learn your kana, learn your kanji. Uh, but your kana, it's gonna take you like, I don't know, it took me like a few days to learn kana. Not a big deal. Kanji you'll be doing for maybe a couple months. So, learning the kana, you can just do it through rote memorization if you want. There's many different things, like, uh, here, th this DGT guide from 4chan I, I got, they have a good kana game. Uh, if you ever want to find them, it's uh, on the Int board, International, uh, DGT, DGT. Let's see. Uh, see, they have a good guide over here. And they have a... Uh, they even have learning guides and stuff. I would recommend this guide. I, I've looked through it. I didn't use it myself. Obviously, it didn't exist back then. But, uh... Oh, that's kind of... That's kind of okay. Yeah, 
I didn't use this guide back then because it didn't exist, but I looked through it, and uh, it's pretty good. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably recommend it. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll just leave that off on here. You want to learn your... I guess I'll just cover Kana and Kanji this time. So, it's a good way to learn Kana. You can find, like, little games and stuff. Like, uh, Kana Learning Game. Uh, Kana Invaders, I don't know. Oh, it's because I'm on Chrome. But, the Kana can be learned easily. You can find them on YouTube videos. It's uh, about two times, because there's Hiragana and Katakana. So, it's about two times the size of our alphabet. Uh, you can use Anki if you want to help you remember them. I, to tell you the truth, I actually did use Anki. And, uh, I know it's not the only method, but Kana isn't, it's not even really something you need to worry about because, uh, you'll probably have it down in about a week tops, personally, uh, unless you're, like, taking it really slow, which is fine, I guess. But, Anything you want to take, if you want to take anything away from this, you want to learn your kana, d dump Romaji, don't even use that trash, and use kanji. And the kanji you can learn over here, kanji.kuhi.com. Uh, first 2042. Now, I know there's most, there's different methods to learn Japanese, obviously, and this is just one of them, but, uh, to make a case for learning the kanji like this, uh, Say you wanted to learn a new word, right? Let's see. Um, like, like, yeah, let's just use our car example. Uh, okay, so let's say I saw this card out in the wild. It was in a sentence, like, uh, I don't know, my... I'll just put English with the, a Japanese word, just so you can see the point. My Karuma is red. Obviously, this would all be in Japanese, and this isn't even a real sentence, but you get the point. I would see this and go, oh, I know that kanji. That's the kanji for car. And it would stick with me. And if I didn't, it would all just look like a bunch of gibberish, like this. Uh, You're like, what is this? What is this kanji? What is this kanji? I don't even know. And you have to learn them separately, and the memory won't stick as well. And at least not for me. Maybe you're uh, some kind of learning prodigy or something, or maybe you just have a better memory than me. But I feel I felt like learning the kanji first provided a good base, and then by the time I went to learning words, uh, it was a it was easier than. Because I tried the other way, to be honest. I tried learning words first, and I was just terrible. I couldn't remember anything. And I, I actually did quit the language after like a month. And I came back to it, and I tried kanji first this time. And I was able to remember things easier. I know a lot of people think, uh... Not a lot. I know some people think, oh, it's a waste of time. You're, you're, you're wasting precious months. Like, dude, you're going to be doing this for years. Like, Japanese, it's it's something you'll be doing for years. Look, even if you think... Even if it's not as helpful as like, I think, and maybe it's just a psychological pill or something, it's only a couple months. And, to be honest, you're not losing anything. All you're doing is gaining information. So, even if it's not the most efficient method, which I actually think it is efficient, otherwise I wouldn't be pushing it, but... Even, let's say, for the sake of argument, it isn't the most efficient. You're still getting stuff out of it. You're still learning. So, to, to sum it up, you want to learn the kana. They're all on, like, find them on, like, Wikipedia, stuff like that. There's so many, like, learning games. Uh, you're basically just learning the alphabet. Here, like these. There's, there's not a whole lot of them. Um, I, I guess I could provide some resources if you guys want, but uh, the reason I'm kind of skimming over it is because uh, I learned these in a few days or something, so it wasn't really that hard. 
But there's tons of word games and stuff out there to remember them. Uh, my main point of this was I wanted to start off with emphasizing to start with kanji uh, after you got the hiragana down uh, because it'll provide a good base for you. Um, see, next after that, I went to this guy called uh, yeah Tai Kim, and uh, he has this awesome grammar guide that a lot of people in the internet recommend, and for good reason. I did it too. I was a terrible student when I was growing up, so I had a hard time remembering a lot of this stuff, but the main point is you want to get the grammar down, otherwise you're not going to be able to touch native materials. Uh, like here, like he, he has good lessons and everything, I'm just, I'm just a terrible student. So what I would do, uh, I, I would read through these, and then I would make a deck. There decks, create deck, uh, grammar. So I'd make a deck, and then I, I would take the example sentences of each grammar point, and uh, I would put them into flashcards. Like, like I, I would do this. There. And then I would see if I could read it and if I could read it, I passed, and if I couldn't, I failed. And that's basically how I did the grammar stuff. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's just one of those things you gotta do to get to the fun stuff, really. And, uh, once you've got your kanji and your grammar down, uh, you're way ahead of those people who just pick up native material at the very start, in my opinion. Which was me. Like, I've been through both sides of the coin. I've, I've done all of it. I, I've I picked up a copy of uh, Dragon Ball Z, tried to read it right away, uh, with bear, just a, I, I knew the hiragana, that was it, and I, I was terrible, I didn't understand a single thing. People would be like, oh hey, you reading DBZ over there? I, I didn't know you knew Japanese, I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I can read it, kinda, but I couldn't understand a single thing that was going on, it was because I didn't know grammar, and it couldn't tell what, where a sentence started and ended besides periods. With besides punctuation because I didn't know any grammar. So if you're like me and you're terrible with lessons, I would take the examples that he gives you in these lessons and make flashcards out of them. Digital flashcards with Anki. And that's how I learned my grammar rules. And so after this I was able to jump into real things. Real Japanese. Uh, so yeah. Just add that and be like, and then you just be able to read this. And if you, uh, if you, actually, I probably, you wouldn't even know how to pronounce this yet. So I would, that card wouldn't even. You have to go to see where, where did he write. Uh, whatever. The card would actually look like a. I know my keyboard's loud. I apologize. I, I write down the pronunciation of any kanji words. It says ashta, and then the hiragana, ashta, and the English translation, tomorrow. And it says, Bob, John wa ashta, and question mark, and then uh, aris, un, ashta, janai, which means no, not today. And obviously these sentences barely make sense, but that's because it's very basic grammar. But uh, after you have basic grammar down, then you can do fun things. You can, well, you could download a core deck or something. And I guess that's one way to do it. There's like core 6K, which is the most uh, commonly used 6,000 words in Japanese. But what I did was I just went straight to manga. I'd be like, how do I read this? Because this is the fun stuff. This is what I wanted. So, uh,. I would just skip around and, and try to find words that I wanted to learn, like situations that I wanted. So this is the method I used. I, I don't know if I'd recommend it or anything, but this is what I did. I would print screen this, I would go to paint, and I, I would crop it out a bit just so it looked nicer on a card. And then I, I would choose the word I wanted to learn. 
like, let's say I wanted to learn this word. And the reason I know it's a word is because it's a grammar. But if you look, it has a here got a translation, here got a pronunciation next to it, which you don't want that on your card, that's cheating. So, get rid of that. And then I would highlight it like this. And it says Ochitsuke, which means calm down. He's saying, calm down, Christina, because she's freaking out because he saw her looking at that uh, picture of Daru with the uh, lab limbs. And then I would make a deck. Uh, I don't. I don't know sentences. I don't know. Eh. Eh. I don't know. Whatever. And then, let's see. Oh, cheats. Okay. And then I would have on the back here. And let's pretend for the sake of argument that I have no idea what this word says. Um, open up your handy dandy Google Translate. I'll let it be honest, I, I hate Google Translate. Like, it'll tell you, calm down. I use um, Rikai Chan or Rikai Kun depending on the browser. I use mouse over. The only problem is it doesn't work for pictures or written documents in Word, but it does work for site stuff. So it says to calm down, to settle down, to be steady. There's like 50 different things, all similar. But, uh, so you just put. Yeah. And there you go, one word. And then you just repeat over and over and over. And, uh, let's see. You want to start off with easier manga. I guess this Steins Gate one would be fine, but there's one, the harder stuff you get for adults, they don't have these little pronunciation, they're called furigana, they don't have these little furigana, because uh, adults know how to pronounce everything, but uh, the stuff for like kids and teens that has furigana, you want to start with, because you'll be able to read it right away, even if you can't comprehend it, and if you can read it, you can type it into Google, and then it'll uh, it'll translate it for you. Like I said, get Rikai Chan or Rikai Kun. It's a plugin. Let me just show you. It's a plugin right here in the web store. Should ever freaking loads. Uh, I have to edit this thing. Ah, eh, screw it. Whatever. It's a plugin. It allows you to mouse over text, you can see it, you get the idea. Uh, so yeah, basically that's it. I mean, there's, it's not really it, there's a ton more. This is kind of only a quick overview. So to sum it up, immersion environment first, you want to be in contact with your uh, second language, which is Japanese in this case. You want to be in contact with it as much as possible, because you want to mimic what it's like for a child like a native child to grow up in uh, in Japan and the easiest way to simulate that is just watch the same shows that they did although it doesn't have to be the exact same shows just stuff you enjoy watch stuff you enjoy but in uh, in their language with no subtitles and it'll be really annoying at first because it all sound like gibberish so it's got to be fun stuff comedy stuff is what I'd recommend like comedy and shonen fighting stuff is easiest to follow, in my opinion. Even if you could not know a single word and you'd be able to follow like Naruto or, or Dragon Ball Z or something. Like it's not that complicated. Even if you don't know a single word, you can follow along the plot just by what their facial animations and everything. But uh yeah, so constant immersion. At least as constant as you can get, you know, with work and everything, real life. Uh then the Kana, which uh there's Tons of sources online that find Kana, like learning games and stuff. You can download apps for your phone to learn the Kana. It shouldn't take you longer than a week. And to be honest, uh, you really only need the Hiragana. The Katakana, I mean, you do need Katakana, but not as much as the Hiragana. Like, Katakana is for loan words, like foreign words. 
like Christina. Christina's not a Japanese name. It's not a Japanese word. They use katakana to because it's a foreign word. But uh, yeah. So guy, you get your immersion, get your kana, and then in my opinion, you want to learn your kanji. And your kanji, you know, they're like these, the Chinese complicated-looking words. And uh, rec I recommend learning the first 2042 with that, the method I showed. Uh, and that'll get you a good base. You can keep going if you want, but I would recommend after 2042 to uh, jump into other things. Maybe do kanji on the side if you want to add in some more. Or you just add in the new ones you find while reading. Uh, then after, the, after that, you want to learn your grammar. You know, get a little Thai Kim there. Wow, that never even loaded. Uh, where are you, Thai Kim? There. Get a little Thai Kim there. It's a guide to Japanese.org. The grammar guide. The complete guide, I think, is a little bit too much, at least for me. I mean, if you want a complete guide to Japanese, go ahead. But I just wanted the grammar rules. That's all I came for. And he is really good at teaching grammar rules. He's got examples and everything. So, after you learn the kanji, learn your grammar rules. And then jump into native material. Like, don't don't even do, like, learning books or anything like that. Just jump right in. Find something you want to do. And preferably something with is furigana. And, and, and if you like doing it, you, you won't be frustrated if you can't read it at first. But just go, you know, one word at a time. Just keep as many as you can every day without burning yourself out. And uh, eventually this gibberish all is, becomes readable <laughs> somehow. It's like magic. But uh, yeah, I guess that's I guess that's all I, I have to say right now. Uh, maybe if people want it, I could go into like specific resources and stuff a little more in depth. But I thought I'd give a general overview for how I I personally went about learning the language. Right now I'm not using manga, I'm actually using something uh, close to that method. But I tweaked it a little, I'm tr right now I'm currently trying to learn every word in Steins Gate. Because I don't know every word, there's a lot of technical words like the science and stuff. I don't even know if I know every English word in the English version of Steins Gate. But, uh, because uh, I'm not very good at science. But that's what I'm going to try to do, that's my current goal for the year. To learn every word in the current Steins Gate game, in the original Steins Gate game. Maybe I'll go for the others after that. But it's just a, little, a fun little thing to do. So you, set, you can set yourself make goals like that. Like, my goal is to read the first volume of this manga. Stuff like that. It'll motivate you. Because if you're going to try to learn this to fluency, it'll take years. There's, there's no way around it. You can try to take as many short pets as you want. It'll, it'll still take years. And you'll still be learning it. So you might as well just get comfortable with it. Anyway, uh, I hope this was, I don't know, insightful, I guess. I'm not much of a teacher. But there you go. That, that is how I learn Japanese is the gist of it. And, uh, yeah, the, the next Steins Gate video, I'm going to try for Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday? I don't know. It, it's a shorter video, but I, I haven't be working on it as much because of real life problems, you know. Just uh, real life gets in the way sometimes. But, I don't know. I'm going to shoot for Tuesday. We'll see what happens. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, talk to you next time. See ya.